Good morning, everybody. Today I have an activity that I have found, and it is related to the fall season, which we're coming into right now. And all you need is some supplies that you probably have around your house right now. So the first thing that you're going to need, you can go out in your backyard or through your neighborhood and take a walk and find a branch. And it's got to be a branch that has other branches coming off of it, and you'll see why in a minute. And then you need a jar or a vase or something that will hold your branch and some stones or marbles to go in it and hold the branch up. And as you can see, I have marbles here, but you can find stones or anything that you think will hold that branch up once you put it in the vase. And then take some paper that looks like fall colors and cut it into leaf shapes. And if you don't have colored paper, then you can just use white paper and imagine whatever color you want or color them into different colors. But these are leaves in fall colors. And then there's a hole in them and some yarn and you're gonna need a hole and some yarn in your leaves. And that's, those few things are all that you need. Well, and then you'll need a pen or a marker but we'll get to that in a minute. So you're gonna put some stones or marbles in your jar and do it carefully. The instructions say that you should, I'll just find a few more here, and roll them in from the side like this. Because if you just drop them in, you could break your jar and you don't wanna do that. So fill your jar up with marbles or stones. That looks like we have a jar full. And then you take your branch and put it in the marbles so it stands up straight or as straight as you can get it. And then this is called a gratitude tree. So then what you do is you take your leaf and you write on there something that you are thankful for, which I know right now there's a lot going. It's hard to find something to be thankful for right now, but this will be a good reminder that there are things out there to be thankful for, even if it's just your dog or your brother or your sister or maybe grandma came to visit last week. Something a little like that. You can even put that on your leaf for the gratitude tree and for the younger ones who don't know how to write yet. You can have an adult write it for you, or you can draw a picture. And once you, I don't actually have anything written on my leaves, but once you get them written on, then you put, then you can, you put them in a basket. You can take turns reading them, or you can just put them right on the tree. But you can't even see that one. Why did I put it there? Put one over here. And this is why it's called a gratitude tree, because it has leaves on it now, and it looks like a tree. And it has things on it that you are thankful for. And then this can sit on your table, and it can be a reminder for the whole season that there are plenty of things to be thankful for. And, of course, there's a holiday coming up later in the year that is all about giving thanks. So if you want to use it for that, you can even wait until then to do this activity. So there are lots of ways you can do that. And then remember that you're grateful for some things that you might not even think about every day, but they're there and they're things to be grateful for. And I want to just show you that I found this activity in this book, the Unplugged Family Activity Book. I know I'm talking about unplugged activities in a video. How ironic is that? But these are, there's, there's over 60 of them. This is a brand new book that just went out on the shelf yesterday. And they're organized by season. So you can find something to do all year round. And there's more. There's craft ideas and there's some rest. Let's see, here's the gratitude tree right there. Mine does not look quite that professionally done. But more things you can do with leaves because there's a lot of those this time of year and there's recipes in here 
So there's all kinds of fun things that you can do that don't involve a computer because I know everybody's probably really overloaded on that right now. And we have another book, Backyard Adventure, same thing. These are all outdoor activities. So some of them it's going to be a little harder to do this time of year. But you maybe find some that you can do in the fall or even in the winter. Or you can just come up with some things to start doing next. You see this one's got a leaf pile in it. You could do that this year. So we have both of these books are available for checkout. So if you need some things to do that don't involve computers, come on in and check those out. And of course, we have lots of other books about every topic imaginable that are also a great unplugged activity for you to do at home as a family. You don't even need books just specifically about those. And it's here somewhere. There we go. Remember our early literacy friend from last week? Well, I have another tip in here. Let me just reach in here and find it. We'll see what kind of tip our friend has to give us today. Let's see. Uh-huh. So it says that you can let your child do the cutting cutting and gluing and hole punching and other activities like that. This doesn't have gluing, but when you have activities with gluing in them, if you let your child do them, then you can help them if they need it and do the cutting and the gluing. And then those activities will help them develop the muscles in their hand, but also help them develop the fine motor skills that they will use one day when they're learning how to write because they'll be able to hold on to a pencil and they'll know how to move their just their hand when they need to. So that is a great tip that you could use these. Actually, I think we used a die cut machine for these, but you could just cut your own by hand and let the child cut and you can help them if they need it. And then one day when they are learning how to write, they'll have what they need. So that is what I have for you today. I will see you next week.